I'm Giant Phantom, I talk about all things Phantom. So if you're new here, hit that like button, hit the sky button, and let's get into the quantum mechanics. Now, I'm no scientist, but I know the quantum mechanics of anime. I can tell you how certain things work in the quantum mechanic realm of science, because I know a lot about it. Anyway, we are discussing the quantum mechanics of the Pokeball. Let's get into it. Now, growing up as a kid, I used to watch Pokemon all the time and trying to understand, like, understand how a Pokeball actually works. As a kid, it's like magic. You know, you take the Pokeball, you throw it, it pops open, you see that red beam cover the Pokemon and put them in there and now he's safe. No matter how big the Pokemon is, it could be a Dragonite. It could be that giant tentacle that we see in that one episode. It could all fit in this old tiny thing. I mean, look at that. There's not a lot of space in there. But they fit because of quantum mechanics. However, there's also a few other things that need to get out and details that need to get out. So it was actually explained the fact that someone noticed that there are mirrors inside there. So basically, all matter has wavelengths and basically those wavelengths are enhanced by the pokeball and made stronger so basically when you catch a pokemon that pokemon is turned into those wavelengths and bounce back and forth inside those mirrors inside the pokeball until it's ready to come back out it is basically just digitizing there's just some kind of computer programming with this that basically just digitizes the pokemon it's able to digitize them and put them in a comfortable state so they can recover and relax in between battles. And it is stated by by Bill that all living things can be digitized in the same way. We even see Bill and we even see Ash, Misty, and Bach go into a digitized state in the digitized world. Uh, Bill does it in one episode, but... Ash, Buck, and Misty do it in the band Poygon episode where they actually get digitized and chase after Poygon. Well, not chase after Poygon. They're actually on Poygon trying to find Team Rocket. Whole big thing. But they are able to be digitized. Digitized world, same as a Pokeball. But there's quite a few other scientific uh, features that we need to discuss. So. In the stories, the Pokeball is able to catch a Pokemon, and then therefore this Pokeball is able to digitize itself and get transferred to the laboratory of whoever your um, leader of that Pokemon is like. Um, all of Ash's Pokemon get transferred to Professor Oak's farm. That's going to be crazy for Professor Oak to have track of everybody's Pokemon, not just, I mean, what was Gary's Pokemon? Whereas the other trainer's Pokemon that, you know, went on this journey with, you know, in the first episode, it's Gary, Ash, and two other trainers. We never see those two other trainers. Where'd they go? Hmm. Huh. Did they, like, just give up? Either way, we don't see... Let's go out Pokemon for, you know, if I saw what I kind of keep track of. But we only see Ash's Pokemon ever, so it's fine. Um... So this little small thing, trying to cram a big book on there, it's gonna be difficult and not entirely work unless. Let's go over a few things before we discuss the quantum mechanics. It's fun saying that word and it makes me sound smart. A Pokeball diameter is 9.52 centimeters, okay? Now, because it's a sphere, with that 9.52 centimeters diameter, we can also calculate the volume by getting the circumference and everything else. So, with that being said, the volume of the Pokeball itself is 
centimeters cubed. Wait, that's no cubed. Um, centimeters to the third. It's been a while since I've been in that class. But yeah, it's 452.11 centimeters to the third. And that we have is Groudon weighing at 950 kilograms, which is 2,094.39 pounds. So Groudon is about 2,000 pounds. With him being 950 kilograms, 2,000 pounds, it would be a result of density of 2,101 kilograms per meter to the third, which is denser than the sun. That's insane. That's a big problem that the fact that this needs to be denser than the sun in order to trap a Groudon. So you can't catch a Groudon because it's, it's going to explode. So how do you catch a Groudon? Well, with quantum mechanics and the quantum entanglement, with the quantum entanglement, whatever happens to one has to happen to the other. With that being said, a Pokeball is really just a small quantum computer. So basically, these break down the Pokemon and digitize them into data and then reconstruct them every single time. So they're literally just data particles floating inside a computer until they're ready to come back out and they're reconstructed. Now, this part of theory wouldn't make sense for the anime. Um, there is a no cloning theorem, which basically states that when that digital information gets broken down and stored inside a Pokeball and is released again, it is not the same. So as a, you can't clone and make a copy of it. So therefore, as that one thing breaks down, uh, basically the computer deletes the original and puts in the new one. So let's say you catch a wild Pikachu. That Pikachu goes in the Pokeball. Awesome, you got it. When you reconstruct that Pikachu by taking out the Pokeball again, it is a different Pikachu than what was originally caught. Then you return that Pikachu back into the Pokeball. That Pikachu is then destroyed and another copy is made and so on and so forth. I don't like that, but according to the quantum mechanics, that's how it must be. So obviously it doesn't work because we know that, well, actually no, that could work. It could be that not the same thing, but that data information stored wise is still transferable so that, you know, Ash's Pokemon still do recognize and still know him every time they come out of the Pokeball. That's just insane to think about that, like, you know, the digital copy. So, if Pokemon are digital at that point, if you catch a wild Pokemon and you digitize that matter into a Pokeball and then take it back out again, now it's just a computer program. It's not even a wild anime anymore. It's just digital information being played out like a computer game or a Game Boy game. That sucks. Quantum mechanics sucks. Yeah, so basically, this kills Pokemon and creates computer generated versions of them. So you can battle with them. Screw you, Pokemon. I'm done with you. Actually, that's a lie. I love Pokemon. I still love it. It's just that this is just mind boggling. Um, so, Pokemon is just Digimon. Digimon is actual digital monsters. So, Digimon copied Pokemon by this idea. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, hit this guy button, comment down below 
your thoughts on this. If you have any other theories or thoughts on how a Pokeball works, please let me know. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video one day about other theories and how Pokeball works. But for now, quantum mechanics, digitizing, and lots of math. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that join button. Check my Patreon page. Check out my merch store. Yeah, I, got, I, I have merch. And I have new merch coming. And if you check out my Patreon page and the join button, all that other stuff, I got stuff that's just for you. So go check it out. Anything you can do down below, like, subscribe, comment, whatever it may be. It all helps and supports me. So thank you. Yeah, what's up? Because you realize I messed up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Before you go, check out that video and that one. And have a good one.